Hey guys, welcome back to Zonlux channel. You are watching HLMS, one of the most detailed MS Law series. Today, we are going to talk about Shinanju as part 3 of the Project UZ. I don't want to waste your time because I know you all love Shinanju. Let's do a quick intro, then we'll start. Before we start the video, make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell next to it. It won't take much time and you can always change your mind. Make sure to turn on your CC sub grab a lot of snacks and drinks. Let's roll. After the Shards Rebellion in UC-093, Earth Federation Force started a new project called UC Project. EFF used the most advanced technologies during that time, which is the cycle frame. UC Project is not only developing new generation Gundams and MS based on the most advanced techs, the project itself is also part of rebuilding order in the Earth sphere, as well as the mentality of the civilians. By cleaning the traces of Xeon's beliefs, no one will remember them and eventually time will wash away the concept of new type. Since EFF never admit new type and Shard's action just made EFF even more scared and treated new type itself as a huge risk. So Project UZ sounds like rebuilding orders but it's actually deleting the new type myth from the UZ world. Thus, once people forget about Xeon, EFF can easily reclaim the autonomy of Principality of Xeon in UZ-0100. AE was in charge of developing different MS for the UZ project. Using the data of Zazabi and New Gundam, the first MS in the project was created, Shinanju Style. Shinanju Style was developed in in Granada. The reason why AE chose the factories there because they decided to name it with Neo Xeon's model number. Granada got a lot of mechanics from Xeonic, so AE finalized the Granada factories as Shinanju Stein's development area. Plus, they name it with Neo Xeon's model number because the sleeves already paid the money for Shinanju Stein. Shinanju Stein combined a lot of excellent designs from the previous wars. First, Shinanju Stein has a full cycle frame implanted movable frame. This design is basically copied from Zazabi, just without the funnels, components, and associated frame parts. Secondly, some of the new Gundam starter was used to perfect the frame furthermore, which made Shinanju Stein's frame to be more stable. Thirdly, since the concept of Shinanju Stein is high mobility, so the developers replaced the funnel components with high output thruster backpack. The backpack was modified from Sazabi, but the layout was more new Gundam pattern. The external propellant tanks under the thrusters were enlarged. Because Shinanju Stein don't have funnels, so the enlarged fuel tank can extend the operation time even longer. Other and massively increased the mobility. Shinanju Style also featured a cycle frame cockpit and intention automatic system. I talked about the cycle frame details in Sazabi's episode, so we'll skip it. And if you want to know it, you can always head back to Sazabi's episode. Intention automatic system is a new system developed based on cycle frame's extension data. This system detects the pilot spring wave, then that pilot spring wave will reflect directly into the cycle frame, making the pilot able to move the MS by just thinking. Whether you're a new type or not, you can pilot with your mind now. However, there's a flip side for this system. The system will pull an Uno reverse car on you. The rules of the reverse control are very unclear. It seems like the system will backfire and control the pilot instead making the pilot become very aggressive. You may say this is like NTD, or be more specific, a prototype NTD system. Once the pilot masters the system, he can use it like his own body. However, mastering the system is hard because the detection is very sensitive. Another toll on the pilot is that once the pilot masters the system completely, it has a chance that the pilot can feel the pain or damage when the MS got hit. I can't find more information, so I will stop right here. The head is designed with both EFF and Neo Xeon's technologies. AE also extracted the data from Sazabi. Shinanju Stive featured a MA level sensor unit, optical fuel finder, and composite sensors. As for the federal side of technologies, Shinanju Stein is equipped with dual eye system like most federal Gundams. The developers used the compact design, laser communication system, and 60mm Falcon gun from Zeta and Delta series. Also, there are sockets on the head. It's presumably for additional high power antenna in the future. The body streamline is a mix between federal standards, new Gundam, and Delta series. There's another layer of additional armor on the chest. It's presumably inspired by Delta series. The limbs are designed to have the maximum movement range. The developers used the Neo Xeon's design and added split armor on each exposed joint. That way it can protect the joint while performing high mobility battle. To further improve the controls during high mobility battles, there are additional verniers in the shoulders and a fin type movable thermonuclear thrusters on each leg. To assist the Shinanju Stein's controls, there is a new balance system in the feet to help to control the central balance. Since 
Shinanju Stein is a prototype, so the weapons are very basic. There's a beam saber in each forearm. They can be handheld or directly attack the target, like a beam tonfa, making melee options became flexible. The main range weapon is High Beam Rival. This rival is developed from the data of New Gundam HWS. High Beam Rival is powerful enough to disrupt a club class with a few shots. Another fun fact, the pilot can also control the aiming and shooting through intention automatic system. The shield is very similar to New Gundam. It also has the same beam cannon and four missiles on the back of the shield. After the completion of Shinanju Stein, two Shinanju Stein was ready to be shipped in the containers. On the 14th of June, UC-094, two club class, was delivering the two Shinanju Stein to another destination. However, Neo Zeon jump attacked the two cruisers and stopped their delivery. Carlos Craig, a federal agent, found out this attack is a secret deal and leaked the information to the MS squadron leader of Unkai, Dakota Winston. They both boarded on the Dragon Type D and Prototype Stock Dragon, and both ships' MS teams were launched to fight back. After a while, Furu Furongtan broke through the defensive line and entered into the Unkai. He found the container and hijacked the Shinanju Stein. With his brilliant piloting skills, the MS team was quickly getting destroyed. Neo Zeon forces also took the second container. Alberto Fist used laser communication and talked to Furu Furongtan. Alberto was complaining how hard would it be to clean up the mess, but he still praised for long term's performance. Alberto also said it's in his expectations that a cyber new type raised by Monogam Bakarov will perform good as usual. For long term was offended by this sentence. He returned to the battlefield and sank both Unkai and Radels. He replied to Alberto, saying now it's all cleaned up. No witnesses and you can say Neo Zeon stole the experimental MS. After the Neo Zeon forces returned to Palau, they ran multiple experiments and testing on the Shinanju Stein. The other Shinanju Stein was disassembled. Some of the Second Shinanju Stein parts and frame was used to complete Shatulia and Rosen Sulu. Narratives Shinanju Stein is a clash timeline because they kind of forgot that the second Shinanju Stein was disassembled. Anyway, what Nick Bannon was chosen to be the test pilot for this final experiment before converting Shinanju Stein to Vulu Vulongtan's personal use MS. What Nick? tested some new weapons such as Beam Rival, Rocket Bazooka, and Beam Axe. One of the Gilasulu's pilot, Lieutenant Minoko, was jealous about that Wetlick is the test pilot. The Intention Automatic System sensed the provocation, as well as Wetlick's heightened emotions and act on its own. Resulting, Shinanju Stein used the Beam Rival and shot through the Gilasulu's cockpit. Minoko was instantly killed after this incident happened, although it was judged to be an accident, but Wetlick was sent to prison until UC-096. In UC-096, Wetlick was released and piloted his custom Dovin Wolf. After the testing and analysis was completed, the technicians converted the Shinanju Stein into Shinanju. Shinanju is modified based on Fulu Fulongtan's fighting style and request. That red paint on it was requested by him as second coming of Sha. All the federal elements were replaced by Xeon's elements. The dual eye system was replaced by Xeon's mono eye. Most of the features from Shinanju style was kept. The main changes are backpack and weapons. First, the technicians added multiple furnias in the frame to further perfect the mobility control. Secondly, the backpack was removed and replaced with a large, flexible thrusters in a wing-like arrangement. The large thrusters can open and fully extend to gain maximum thrust speed. Combined with the crimson color, it surely left a deep impression to the people who saw it, reminding them the Red Comet. The weapons were changed to fit high-speed battle. The only weapons from Jinanju style are 60mm falcon gun and beam sabers. The high beam rifle was removed because Fulonto believed that a heavy rifle is a burden during high-speed battles. So he ordered the engineers to use the supplies in the Jinanju style containers to modify the rival. The result is this new beam rival. The output of this rival is higher than a standard rival because it has its own energy condenser. Just like the high beam rival, it can be controlled through intention automatic system too. If Shinanju needed to snipe the enemy, all it needs is a long range sensor. Additionally, Shinanju can equip grenade launcher or rocket bazooka under the rival's barrel. The technicians pull the original Stein's shield apart, improve it with Neo Zeon's design and increase the practicality of it. First, the shield was sharp and able to cut the enemy if Shinanju don't have time to use melee weapons. The shield was rearranged to have defense and offense balanced. There's a pair of beam axe on the back of the shield. The beam blades can be different depending on different output. Usually, beam axe can be appeared with axe blade, saw axe blade, or combined to form a beam naganata. However, the OVA never showed the beam naganata. It only appeared in novel. If required, the beam axe can be used as handheld weapon too. So the usage is very flexible. 
well. Other than Beam X, the bottom back of the shield can also store grenade launcher or rocket bazooka. The rocket bazooka is the true new weapon on it. It's very similar to the one on New Gundam and Unicorn Gundam. The bazooka's barrel is extendable. Once extended, it will give a good velocity to the physical round. The bazooka can still shoot while it's compacted, but shooting without extending the barrel will decrease the velocity and effectiveness. The bazooka has five rounds. It can either be handheld or dock with the beam rival, adding more layers to Shinanju's offensive tactics. After the modification, Shinanju was first appeared when the sleeves were pursuing the Neru Agama. Shinanju used its high mobility to circle around Neru Agama, destroyed multiple anti-air machine gun, shot down three MS easily and severely damaged the Neru Agama's left catapult. Later, Balaji links piloted the Unicorn Gundam and battled against Vulu Vulongtan's Shinanju. But the first half of the fight is basically Shinanju winning with his mobility. Unicorn didn't hit anything except the asteroid that Shinanju was standing on. Very soon, Unicorn activated the NTD system and fought against the Shinanju briefly. Thanks to the NTD performance enhancement, Unicorn was able to catch up with Shinanju, but Banaji only damaged a thruster on the side of the Shinanju's leg. Fulongtan lured the Unicorn to Shatolia. Marida just punched the cockpit of Unicorn and Banaji fainted due to the constant haji while he is piloting the Unicorn. Banaji was captured and held in Palau. Nehru Agaman and Echoes worked together, attacked Palau but did not damage the residential block at all. Shinanju briefly appeared and took out a lotto. Fulongtan went back to Reolula after that kill. When Unicorn went to the wreckage of Laplace to unlock the Laplace program's seal, the sleeves found out their location through Psycho Monitor. Dakosa and Mako used mines and bazooka to create a trap, thus damaged the Shinanju's face, but Dakosa sacrificed himself too. NTD responded to Banaji's anger and Unicorn overpowered Shinanju. In the end, Unicorn pulled Shinanju's left leg off like it's nothing, but Shinanju still escaped because Giloboa sent took the shot instead. Later, when Galanche was temporarily worked with Neru Agama, EFF sent General Raffle to eliminate both ships. Unicorn ran out of view and the sleeves came and saved them. Shinanju sniped from far away and eventually pushed to the front of General Revel. With the excellent piloting skills, Flonto easily defeated the defensive force and landed some hits on the General Revel. After some shots on the General Revel, Shinanju did a gamer finishing move and retreated from the battlefield since the sleeves saved Neru Agama. So Flonto got a chance to spoke with the princess of Zion and Banaji. However, the talk was failed and the situation was going downwards. When Flonto headed back to Rail Ruler, Shinanju became the core unit and docked into Neo Zion. Before moving on to Neo Zion, let me do two quick fact explanation. When Flonton attacked Neru Agama, you can see Alberto Fist provided the data of Shinanju. It's different than the Shinanju itself because that data disk was created based on assuming what Neo Zion will do on the Shinanju style. Technically, the data was not accurate so the pilots can't fully rely on it. Secondly, Neo Zion does not exist in the original novel. In the novel, Flonton's despair was powerful enough to make the cycle frame glow like Unicorn. It created a red cycle field and clashed with Unicorn's cycle field. Just like the OVA, Flonton did make a time travel or something similar to that, but he was not defeated by the backlash of Cycle Frame's power. He was defeated by Banaji after Shinanju fought a long battle with Unicorn. Unicorn used both Beam Tomfa and stepped into Shinanju's cockpit. And Banaji said something like, Heisha Souls should be back into the darkness. Alright, moving on to the Neo Zion. Neo Zion is the tallest MA in the UZ world. It combined all the MA data and technologies from both Zion and Fedis. Neo Zion is taking direct inspiration from Xeon, which is why you can see the giant skirt and internal thrusters under the skirt. Instead of having legs, there is a pair of strength booster under the skirt, which the fuel consumption will always start from the boosters. The boosters will provide better mobility and extend the operation time. Once the boosters are emptied or damaged, they will be purged and now the main thrust will come from the internal thrusters. Other than internal thrusters, there are two landing gears underneath the front skirts and one mountain in the back skirt. The developers took inspiration from DO during grip conflict. The landing gears underneath the front skirts can also be used as subarms. There are five wired large funnel bits on each tip of the arm. This design resembled the wired five barrel mega particle cannon on the Zeong. The wired bits can shoot beam or use like a cycle weapon or launch at once to overwhelm the target easily. Once the wired bits are close enough, it will split into three drill tipped wires and hijack the target. Neo Zeong can choose to make the target shoot itself, fight against each other or turning the high hijack suits into its own army to engage the enemies. The hacking program cannot be removed unless the wire bits are cut off. So what if the wire bits are destroyed?
destroyed. There's another spare set stored in the arms to replace the destroyed bits. So you are basically fighting 10 wired bits. To make the Neo Zeon even more overwhelming, the developers used the design on Noe Jiru, which ended up Neo Zeon has 4 extra arms on the back. Combining the wired bits together, you need to dodge 30 beams or 30 wired bits. The spare sets were not even included yet. That just shows how broken it sounds like on paper. Moving on to more powerful weapons, there are 6 large mega particle shoulder cannons, 4 in the front and 2 in the back. The beam can be either scattering shot or focused beam. The focused beam from the shoulder cannons can easily shoot through the Connolly wall. Right next to the shoulder cannon, there are weapon containers in the shoulder compartment. Various types of weapons can be stored in them, including rocket bazooka and missiles. On the waist, there is a large caliber high mega particle cannon. This cannon is the strongest beam weapon on Neo Zeon. However, this cannon is really limited and it cannot fire again after the first shot. It has a long cooldown time. The most powerful weapon out of all weapons on the Neo Zeon is Psycho Shard Generator. This weapon has no explanation at all, no details on how it was made, no technologies background and purely invented by Vulu Fulongtan. It was rumored that Fulongtan possessed the spirit of Shar Asnavu, which allowed him to create this weapon because he reached the higher existence of knowledge. The Psycho Shard Generator is stored in the side of the skirt armor and large shoulder thrusters. When deployed, it will form into a circle and generate a lot of gold than hexagonal crystals. The crystals will react to the pilot's faults and actualize them, which is why Neo Zeon can suddenly destroy both Unicorn's weapons. You know what, I can't explain it anymore because this weapon is space magic. For a large MA like Neo Zeon, in order to improve the survivability, there are a total of 4 eye view generators at the front and back waist. It won't cover the shoulders and arms, but it will cover the center of the body. What about the unprotected areas? Those areas will be covered by anti-beam coating to make sure it won't be damaged after a few shots. In the past, Xeon's MAs are very powerful, but at the same time, they never reached to the expected results. MA can change the battle situation by itself because they either have high defense, superior attack powers, or both at the same time. However, if the MA's pilot has bad skills or bad mental stability, it's very easy that the MA will be destroyed as a whole. The developers considered this problem, taking inspiration from both GP03 and TRL6 Inna. Shinanjiu can undock from the Neo Xeon and fight again on its own. By adding this separate system, it will increase the practicality of MA and Shinanju won't die along with the MA. Lastly, despite Shinanju is a core unit of Neo Zeon, but it can still use the 60mm falcon gun and beam sabers if needed. Neo Zeon was first deployed when the sleeves found out the final destination of Laplace program. Flonton invaded into the Industrial 7 and left Neo Zeon behind. Flonton found the secret chamber where he met Mineva, Banaji, and Siamu Fist. During the negotiation, he also controlled two Jagan Echoes type and made them shoot at each other. Fulongtan stated that the Lapas box should be used as a leverage to bargain with the federal government, but Simu rejected him as Simu believed that the box shouldn't be on the hands of people who would take leverage of it, including Simu and Fulongtan himself. As the negotiation failed, Fulongtan pulled out the pistol and intended to kill all three of them. However, Simu activated the room's security system, and Fulongtan was forced to return onto the Neo Zeon. Fulongtan controlled another Jagan Echoes type and it was destroyed by Banshee Norn. Neo Zeon used the shoulder cannons and pushed Banshee Norn out of the Connolly. Gao Chen came with his custom silver bullet, trying to fight Neo Zeon, but he was defeated very quickly. Right before he accepts his death, Banaji called the Unicorn Gundam protected Gao. Neo Zeon left the Connolly. Both Unicorn teamed up and Volonton used the Psycho Shot Generator's crystals to destroy all of their weapons. Without any weapons, both Gundams can only punch and fight Neo Zeon with bare hands. Unicorn Gundam performed a full combo of Nanto Suijouken, ripped the Neo Zeon apart with its bare hands, then proceeds to perform the ultimate attack and use Nanto Suijouken Oi Hisho Haklai. Flonton had enough of the martial art and used the other four arms to grab Unicorn. Then Flonton used his own time stone and performed time travel with Banaji. They went through a lot of major events in the UZ world, then he showed Banaji the end of time, claiming that it will never change in the end. Banaji then used the Psycho Frame Aura and disintegrated all Neo Zeon's arms. He used the warm flight to touch the Neo Zeon. Somehow, Shar and Nalasun's spirit came back. 
he talked to Flonton and telling him it's time to go. The cycle frame energy was reached to its peak. The energy backlashed to the Neo Zeon and disintegrated both Neo Zeon and Shinanju. Before Flonton left the world, he told Banaji to do what he wants. The future is in his hands. Okay, may I stop for a moment? Am I writing HLMS or Magic Girl? Not being a hater, but the anime ending sounds too magical. So why not narrate it with magical storytelling? Because I can't tell it's Gundam or magical fights. After the third Neo Zeon War, another Shinanju Stein, aka the Unit 2, was appeared. It was piloted by Zolota Akahen and participated the Phoenix Hunt. Previously, we learned that Unit 2 is disassembled. The parts and frame is on Rosensulu and Shatolia. There are multiple reasons to explain the Unit 2 reappearance. Some said that the sleeves had enough parts to recreate another Shinanju Stein. Some said that Gundam narrative itself is a plot hole. And some said that narrative is an alternative timeline. I personally think it's a plot hole, but choose what you prefer. Since Unit 1 and 2 has a lot of similarities, so I'll just focus on what is changed between the two units. First of all, most of the Unit 1's armor was kept. Only the chest and wrists got new sleeves custom armor. Secondly, compared to Unit 1, Unit 2's colors are darker. Lastly, all the weapons and systems are the same just like the Unit 1. But there's a few changes. The shield is pulled apart and slightly customized. The beam cannon and missiles are removed, replaced by a grenade launcher. The shape of the shield is different. The AE logo was also removed. The high beam rifle has a new docking point under the barrel, so Shinanju Stein can dock the rocket bazooka onto the rival like Shinanju. After the Laplace incident, another Neo Zeon was sealed by EFF. That Neo Zeon was later transferred to Law Shokai. In UC-097, Operation Venex Hunt was secretly begun. Michelle Law used her own political power and secretly gave the Neo Zeon back to the sleeves. The reason why she gave it back was because Michelle wants to use the sleeves to lure out the Phoenix, as two cycle frames will have a chance to resonate. Second Neo Zeon is built with Neo Zeon spare parts. The weapons and features are still the same, just like the original Neo Zeon. About the second Neo Zeon's change is very little and hard to notice. Out of unknown reasons, the covers on the weapon containers are gone. To increase the rigidity of the weapon containers, these red frames are the reinforced components. There are new weapons in the weapon containers other than two rocket bazookas. There's a pair of beam rival from Shinanju and a pair of large beam axe. The movable armor around the core unit is removed, so Shinanju style will always have its upper body exposed. The arms are now like the Zeon, able to control through wires and be became even more overwhelming. Also, the beams that shoot from the arms can now be altered, sort of like creating a stable beam to use it like a huge beam saber. Shinanju Stein first appeared in size 6. The sleeves picked up a cycle monitor signal and entered into the colony. However, the signal was a decoy and they met the Shizar team. Zolotan attacked the narrative B pack. Yona don't want to damage the colony, so he refused to fight the Shinanju Stein. Zolotan kept pushing the narrative B pack. He doesn't care about the casualties and kept shooting. Yona don't have a choice but to fight back, but he was getting thrown around the whole time. Because Solotan thinks fighting a Gundam without psycho-related weapons is insulting him. Eventually, Yona was saved by the Phoenix. Solotan was claiming that there isn't enough psycho frame, so he ordered his ship to send out the second Neo Zeon. Narrative's NTD system was forcefully activated. It caused a psycho hijack, and Narrative was stocked with the second Neo Zeon. Yona was angry, and all the flashbacks flooded in. He remembered how many lies he was told by Michelle. The NTD system responded to his range, and second Neo Zeon was about to destroy the colony. Phoenix came, and Rita used her remaining soul to calm Yona down. Second Neo Zeon was stopped, and both sides retreated. Later, Solotan found out that Alec Hugo was secretly communicating with Minister Monahan. He also learned the truth that he's no more than an abandoned pawn. He killed Alec and piloted the second Neo Zeon, heading towards the Helium Free Base. Second Neo Zeon overwhelmed the entire General Rebel squad. It's invincible until the Phoenix came and guided the pilots to attack second Neo Zeon's weakness spot. Yona arrived and Phoenix borrowed its power to Yona. Narrative C Pack used a cycle slash wave and disintegrated two arms on second Neo Zeon. Second Neo Zeon ignited the helium gas and made a big explosion. Phoenix and Narrative are both unharmed because of the Phoenix shields. Phoenix was caught by second Neo Zeon after the explosion. Yona was trying to save Phoenix, but he was stopped by the Shizar team's Jester, which the Jester was controlled by the hacking program. Eventually, Narrative was destroyed and his core fighter was saved by Banaji's Silver Bullet Suppressor. Ritter responded to Yona's will and Phoenix allowed Yona to pilot it. With both Michelle and Ritter's spirits, 
Fenix activated anti-D system and disarmed Second Nail Zeon easily. Jinan Ju Stein detached from the Second Nail Zeon. Fenix used the Beam Tover and pushed Solotan back. Before Solotan dies, he used his last will and attempted to make every helium free tank went out of control. The cycle frame on Fenix reached to the peak, became the hot one flight, and took Second Nail Zeon plus the explosion away. In the end, Fenix left the world and we never know where it went. Thanks for watching this episode. If you like this video, make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell next to it. Recently, Uni is busy, so next episode will be a bit of waiting. Now, if you are interested to watch or re-watch all the episodes, the playlist is in the description. Special thanks to Zazubo and Natural Bro for trimming the photos. Refix for editing the audio, please check out Ref's channel. Join my Discord, feel free to donate and support my work. All links in the description and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.